Hi, this is Richard Rainin, and this is your Building Curiosity Update. I'm in the middle of the Mars yard at the Jet Propulsion Lab, where we're testing out an engineering model of the Mars Science Laboratory rover, more commonly known as Curiosity. The Mars yard was created to try to simulate the types of different terrains that we might encounter on the surface of Mars. We have everything on this Mars yard from rocks that are the size of about 25 to 30 inches in height to varying slopes, and the slopes vary from about 5 degrees all the way up to about 20 degrees, which is the driving capability of this particular vehicle. We've put flagstone on the surface to simulate bedrock. There's also loosely compacted soil. And in addition to that, we've over here created a sand pit with very non-cohesive sand, much like beach sand. If you recall, the MER rovers have had some difficulty when they've gotten into deep sand areas and actually have had gotten stuck. So we're evaluating this rover and see how it behaves in the sand media. We're going to be driving up the rover on both flat sand as well as slope sand and evaluating how the vehicle behaves, how much slip, whether it gets itself stuck, things of that nature. We'll also be looking at the visual odometry markers that we have on the wheels. There are asymmetric patterns, actually holes inside the wheels of the rover, that will leave an imprint on the surface of Mars. It's going to be looking at these imprints and verifying that it has traversed the distance that it expects to have traversed. If it looks like it's not traversing even though the wheels are going, that is an indication to the vehicle that it is getting stuck and it will stop and call back home. Testing with the vehicle has gone very well to date. The vehicle has matched our computer predictions in almost every way. From this point forward, it goes down into the test bed for avionics integration and further electrical checkouts. This is Richard Rainin, and this has been your Building Curiosity Update. Today is a really exciting day. It's a milestone for MSL in the sense that the first time we're seeing the rover drive on its own wheels, uh, its own mobility system. It's gone from designs on napkins to PowerPoint, you know, to uh, CAD drawings, to blueprints, and now it's a rover. This is really one of the big milestones. Uh, you know, we've been all designing various parts of the rover in, in different places at JPL, different places around the world. And now to see them come together and to see a rover sitting in front of us and actually have somebody press a button and it drives, you know, this really gives us a vision of, of this rover's real and it's going to be on Mars someday. It's going to explore a big area on Mars. That's one of the reasons it's so big and has such a great driving capability. We wanted to ba basically drive it around 10 or 20 miles around the landing site on Mars and look for places that may have been habitable early in Mars history, places that were friendly to life. I've seen pictures of this rover for so many years, you know, I, kn I know it in my sleep, but yet to see it like real life and to know that this is the actual thing that's going to Mars and will drive around over rocks and soil and, and you know, go down into craters, uh, that's, that's kind of amazing. It sort of blows your mind to, to look at this thing and see, uh, see something that's going to be on Mars. With. My name is Peter Ilsley. I'm the rover integration lead for MSL during the assembly test and launch operations phase, or ATLO. The tests we're doing now are actually helping us learn how to drive the arm from both the operator side as well as the, the flight software side, helping us develop that rover hand-eye coordination. Let's say we wanted to go drill a rock. The way we do that as humans is actually we use our depth perception and we look at that rock in, in space and we say, oh, we think it's about so far away. Well, that judgment has come through our human experience as we've learned exactly how, you know, how far away our arms are from things. The rover needs to do the same thing, but right now it, it's not very good at predicting that. 
it certainly is is one of the most complicated things we do with the rover simply because of the number of degrees of freedom of the arm the number of motions the arm can make the arm can actually collide with the rover the arm can actually hurt the rover if we're not careful just like you can poke yourself in the eye we can do the same with the rover so we have to teach it not to do that by defining a space it keeps out of in the next test sequence, we're going to actually lift the rover onto a tilt table and tilt it up to 20 degrees, and that's where we'll actually simulate being on a crater wall or a, a large slope or a large obstacle so that we will understand how that change in gravity vector will actually affect that same set of arm movements. I actually think this is one of the most rewarding times in the, in the build process. This is really where you get to see all of those neat firsts of, of the rover, you know, the first drive, the first motions of the arm with the flight system software and with the, the rest of the flight system hooked up to it. And, and seeing that successfully work is incredibly rewarding. I'm Peter Ilsley and this has been your Building Curiosity. Hi, my name is John Wirth and this is your Building Curiosity Update. I am uh, the MSL Atlo electrical lead, which means I'm the head Sparky. Sparky means we do all the electrical integration, we verify that the connectors are mating correctly, we do all that kind of stuff. We're asked quite often why we have to hook up our wire to this ground lug, and what this does is this bleeds off electrical charge on our body to the earth. The rover has sensitive electronics in it, so if we got close with a charge, it might damage it. This just ensures that we're down to a zero charge when we work on the rover. So what we're doing today is we're getting ready for system test. We load some flight software, which is the brain, software in your brain, trying to tell this thing that, hey, I'm going to simulate going through launch, cruise, EDL, and surface operations. So what the guys are doing now is they're electrically connecting up each of the vehicles together so it thinks it's mechanically hooked together, which tells the rover or makes the rover think that it's going to go through all its mission phases to ensure the flight software and the electronics will actually work when we get to Mars. We're one year away from launch and so right now is a real busy time for us because we're trying to prepare the hardware to get going to Florida next year. So right now everybody can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel because we're getting close to, to launch. So everybody's excited about making things happen right now. This has been your Building Curiosity Update, and I'm John Worth. Hi, I'm Randy Stark, and this is your Building Curiosity Update. We're here in the Environmental Test Facility at JPL, where Curiosity is going through a series of random vibration tests. This test is like putting Curiosity through a major earthquake. It's going to shake it both side to side and up and down. You'll notice that Curiosity is actually in its flight configuration, which is upside down. Three, two, one. We have ignition. These tests will ensure that the hardware was not only built correctly but assembled and will survive the launch conditions. Next will be system thermal vacuum tests where we put Curiosity in a large vacuum chamber and simulate the environments both hot and cold that Curiosity will see during its journey to Mars and also during its life on Mars. It sure seems like we're putting Curiosity through a lot of abuse, but the more testing we could do here on Earth will ensure a safer journey on the way to Mars and a longer life once we get to Mars. This is Randy Stark, and this has been your Building Curiosity Update. Hi, I'm Anthony Ganino, and this is your Building Curiosity Update. We're up here in the 25-foot space simulator building at JPL. Here on the lab, we often call the environmental test portion shake and bake. Uh, we just got out of vibration testing, which is the shake portion, and now we're moving on to the bake portion, which would be our thermal vacuum testing. In order to complete these tests, we have to move the rover into the chamber. Uh, we do that with a series of lifts and uh, lower it onto some ground support equipment that was previously installed into the chamber. You can see beyond this plastic shield, the rover is being worked on by our technicians to get it ready for thermal tests. When we get ready to start the test, We'll remove that plastic from the door and a large steel door will come in, close out the chamber, at which point we can start changing the temperature inside and pumping down the pressure to simulate Mars conditions. 
we take the rover down to about negative 100 to negative 130C, which is about negative 200 to a negative 150 Fahrenheit, and up to 30 or 40C, which is about 86 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Over that time, we also are gonna be adjusting the pressure on the rover to simulate the vacuum of deep space, and then taking it to about 1 one hundredth of the pressure on Earth. We only get one chance to get on Mars and drive this vehicle around. So we want to put it in the harsh environment that it's gonna see and make sure that not only do all the instruments function, but all of the temperatures that we expect to see on the vehicle are accurate to what we've modeled and planned. I'm Anthony Ganino, and this has been your Building Curiosity Update. Hi, I'm Savannah McCoy, and I'm the Rover Verification and Validation Lead. My job is to run system level tests on the rover structure to ensure it's capable of the requirements we have for Mars. Basically, for the Mars program, we build two rovers in parallel. Once the flight rover, and once the test rover, or DTM. The main difference between the flight rover and the DTM rover is that the flight rover actually goes to Mars. Just recently, we ran a major test called the Skycrane Full Motion Drop Test. This test is to check out the EDL sequence, or Entry, Descent, and Landing Sequence, for Curiosity for the first time we're going to be touching down on Mars with just the rover's wheels. So this is the sequence leading up to that touchdown on Mars. Because this test is so important to the project, almost all of the team wanted to gather and watch the test. We actually projected it into multiple conference rooms around the lab so that everyone could have access to this very large milestone for our project. Test is commencing in five. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. The reason we do all this testing is to prove that what we think is going to happen actually will happen when Curiosity gets to Mars, and that we really understand the dynamics of these vehicles. During this test, everything behaved as expected. We were able to collect all of the data and instrumentation that we were hoping for. So overall, definitely a huge success. I'm Savannah McCoy, and this has been your Building Curiosity Update. Hi, I'm Nathaniel Thompson. And I'm Dan Cota. And this is your Building Curiosity Update. We're standing here in front of the large spin table. This is the machine that we use to measure the mass properties of the Curiosity spacecraft. Mass properties describe the way an object moves through space. There's three mass properties that we measure. Mass, center of gravity, and the rotational inertias. The rotational inertias tell us how the matter is distributed and spread out. It affects how easy it is to spin the object, and also how the object will wobble as it's spun. During the cruise phase, as we're flying through space to Mars, the vehicle is rotating, and it's using a camera, a star scanner, to navigate by taking pictures of the stars. If we're rotating and wobbling, we can't get a good track on the stars, and we won't be able to properly navigate. We also use our antennas to communicate back with Earth. Again, if we're wobbling too much, we can't correctly communicate with Earth. The principle of a rotational inertia test is very similar to the way you have your tires balanced at your local mechanic. The mechanic will rotate the tires very quickly on a machine that measures the amount that it wobbles. They will then put balancing weights on the tire until it spins smoothly. This is exactly the way we spin and balance our spacecraft. Now we know what mass properties are, how do we go about measuring them? To do that, we need a special machine called a spin table. This is a miniature version of the large table that we use to measure our spacecraft. The table floats on a cushion of air. There are sensors inside the body of the table that measure the balance of the rover on top of the table, kind of like a seesaw. We've done a lot of testing already here at JPL. Now, we're packing up our table and getting ready to ship it to Florida. In Florida, we'll be doing the most exciting test of all a full spacecraft with fuel loaded on the table, measuring it to make sure it's ready for launch. I'm Nathaniel Thompson. And I'm Dan Cota, and this has been your Building Curiosity Update.